are certain, there are certain institutions that has, have different mandates. Kenya, Kenya Seed Company, Mr. Speaker, has a mandate to scale up or multiply seeds that are used by our farmers, and uh, there will be that opportunity. There is opportunity for government to grow enough or to germinate enough seed for use by you. To pro yeah, to prop yes, enough in, enough seed for use by our farmers. Mr. Speaker, in the uh, in the in the immediate in, in the immediate uh, pro if our immediate problem is really food, and uh, of course government will be uh, guided by best practices from other jurisdictions that uh, manage uh, uh, or that consume or use uh, GMO won't be guided by World Health Organization guidelines. Mr. Speaker, will also be, I think, be able to uh, take decisions and say, for example, if this is GMO, you can level the maize that you buy or the food that you buy from a supermarket so that when you go to a supermarket, you are able to identify whether you want GMO or not, or choose to die of hunger, and not taking GMO. Because that is a really, a really big problem that uh, we must really address and address it uh, uh, candidly. Uh, I was asked about, uh, uh, I think, uh, is Raso about uh, livestock. Livestock, Mr. Speaker, is uh, is an area that has really uh, uh, requires serious support as far as, as far as I am concerned. And there is, I mentioned Raso that will be consulting with the farmers and uh, the the county governors, especially for the 21 semi-arid areas, on how we can be able to ensure maximum productivity and reap most for our farmers on on uh, through, through livestock. We'll be proposing, uh, since uh, 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 counties have owning areas, they, were used, they used to be called owning areas for livestock, whether they can see how we can be able to establish so that those animals that really for us get more can be fed from there and you wait and then you have maximum that you can gain because you have uh, an institution like KMC, KMC that will be able to take up your your livestock for commercial. We also have probably pro, uh, proposed off-take programs so that uh, when there is drought a time like now and ask the government to also to keep a reserve just like we are providing for food, strategic food reserves, we can also be able to uh, persuade the government to provide for our kitty that will be able to buy livestock during those uh, drought, uh, uh, those very hard uh, times for purposes of making sure our farmers do not live, uh, lose their livestock. There is also our, our livestock insurance program, which we can also really bring in so that uh, in the event of loss, of our animals, then the farmers really do not lose. But all this will happen, uh, Mr. Speaker, if I have that opportunity to discuss with the people that, uh, are, that, that are technical in the ministry that will advise me, and then we'll be able to appear before you as members and the leaders of this country, because you are the people that are exercising raw power from the public in terms uh, and agreeing on how we want really to our country uh, to move forward. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I was asked uh, something to do with the Galana Kulalu water, uh, Kulalu project, and from I think uh, where I sit, the whole idea was for from from this was to provide proper infrastructure for investors to come in and uh, do uh, uh, agriculture. But uh, Mr. Speaker, this project, in my view, is good. Something we really need to see how to revive it because the whole project was condemned because on the, on the, from uh, the first season, because the, the production that came out of the 10,000 acres was not able to meet the cost of investment. And people thought that was a scandal. <coughs> there is no way you can have such huge investment and expect to reap benefits on the, in the first season. So Mr. Speaker, to address the future problems of a our country, we must face uh, this uh, dragon end on, and I think we will not shy, shy away from dealing or uh, improving infrastructure on Galala Kulalu so that we can have uh, investors to, to, uh, to farm. Uh, Mr. 
other speaker, I think uh, Masse talked about misplacement of roads uh, in in uh, in the Ministry of Trend and the Ministry of Agriculture. And on, uh, uh, I didn't get the proper name, but uh, was it Kenya land? It is about to be the warehouse in the city. Yes, state. correct. <coughs> there is an order that has taken that to the Ministry of Trade. Yet it was established by the Ministry of Agriculture for crops and uh, livestock products. So that misplacement, how are you going to deal with it? Uh, Mr. Speaker, you know, when, if, when, we, when I have made sure uh, that our farmers have produced enough food and in consultation, working together, with all the other stock, stakeholders. The, the other part in terms of how that food gets to its market, I think is an aspect of trade. Where there is, there will be need for us to consult with my brother Moses Kuria in addressing this problem. I will be willing and ready to engage. Where the farmers are probably to feel that uh, one or two things are not clear, are not right, We'll be open to discussions, and more open, that's what we find. Even when we legislate and pass law, there are those rooms where when you find there is some bit of lacuna, the, the intentions of the law are not properly, uh, is not being achieved, then we'll always be coming back for, for amendments. So when it is trying, and for example, if it doesn't work, then you know the president has, has power to transfer functions from one ministry to another. So let's, I remain hopeful that in whatever uh, 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 department or ministry and government uh, uh, institution or mandate is given, then being bound by the collective rule of government, then we'll be able to sort the problems of our Kenyan people together. Mokami. Uh, I said the uh, GMR is not popular. Uh, Mr. Speaker, you know, we can also, when things are done differently, and the forces of demand sub and uh, supply are left to fix prices in, uh, uh, in a normal market, uh, then that would be the most ideal situation. I think we can still achieve this if, for example, we were to ensure as government we are able to bring down the cost of inputs to a great level. If we can be able to maximize productivity on our small pieces of land, we can be able still to have the forces of demand and supply fix the prices of our produce. And I also want to tell the Kenyan people that are listening, the supply of fertilizer is not, is not a quick fix problem of what we're having. We are trying to support farmers to apply that fertilizer to the source that need fertilizer. And that's something that we've not really discussed or seriously about, because whenever government gives us this on fertilizer, everybody goes running to pick fertilizer, even for soils that do not need fertilizer. So as a, as a ministry, I want to ensure that we provide necessary information, I will be able to test our soils and advise our farmers and uh, probably come up with a new platform where farmers will be able to know what fertilizer to use in what particular uh, soil with certain pH. That way, we will be able to achieve more.